welcome to another episode of a Metro East mini class. My name is Lauren and I'm one of the trainers here at Metro East Community Media. The purpose of these videos is to allow you to preview the material that we present uh, live and in person monthly each, uh, each month here at Metro East Community Media so that you can preview the material before you take the class to you know, be better prepared to understand it later on or you can review the material after you've taken the class if you just want to brush up on what you learned before or if it's been a while since you've used the equipment then you have a chance to kind of go back and brush up your skills. Today we're going to be focusing on this piece of equipment, our TriCaster production switcher. TriCaster, by the way, is just a brand name of the company that makes this. There are a whole variety of different kinds of production switchers that all work very much the same way. But the TriCaster is one that we have here in our Studio A, also in our smaller Studio B, and then we also have a mobile version that's available on our mini mobile unit. Um, I just wanted to start by giving you a quick tour of the switcher, talk a little bit about what switchers do, um, and we'll look at the different parts of it here, and then we'll go back afterwards and kind of show you how to power things up and really begin from the beginning. Okay, so the purpose of a video switcher in general is to allow you to take all the different video sources that you have available, and those in our case are the cameras that we have out in our studio, which you can see on the small monitors here. We have four cameras in our Studio A, they're all plugged into the switcher here, and the idea is that we're gonna make one recording, but we're able to switch between those four cameras so we can be constantly changing the view of what the, the audience is seeing in the program. Uh, we're equipped here to do both live and recorded programs, so you can uh, switch the show that's going out over the cable TV system as it's happening, or you can make a recording of that switched show, which theoretically also saves you from having to do a lot of editing later on um, when you're finishing up the show to be aired on our channels. So again, the unit that we're using here consists of a few different parts. The real brains of the TriCaster is actually over here behind me, so I'm gonna scooch over a little bit. This is the actual computer that runs the, the TriCaster system. If we open the door on the front, there are really just two parts of the, of the switcher here um, that you'll get to in here. One of them is the power switch right on the front that's a little hard to see. Uh, and then there are all two, also two USB ports in the front of that. So if you have a little USB thumb drive and you wanna be able to uh, import a graphic or a video clip into your project, you can easily plug it in there and add that to your program. There are also four hard drives in the TriCaster here, which can be used either for saving the projects that you're working on or also uh, recording the video uh, that you actually produce with the system. And then moving back over here, the most obvious part of the TriCaster is this colorful uh, control panel here. They call it the control surface. And this is where you'll actually do, be doing most of the switching between cameras on the controls here. There is also a mouse and a computer keyboard connected to it for various things like being able to click on things uh, up on the screens here uh, or to enter information about the name of your project and that sort of thing. And then the two monitors that you see up here allow you to be constantly seeing what each of your videos are is doing to monitor what your cameras are doing and, and see what, what graphics are available or what video clips are available to play back. The lower part of, of the screen here is actually divided into these smaller screens, which they refer to as camera monitors. I happen to have them set up here so we see camera one on the far left, camera two next to that, camera three, and then camera four. And then further down, I've assigned it to show us other video sources. So there's something called DDR1 here. A DDR is one of the video playback uh, systems available on the TriCaster. So we have a tape or a video queued up there available to play. Next to that is DDR2, which is actually another, uh, the ability to play back another video clip. And then over here, we have two graphics bins, graphics one and graphics two. So those might be things like photos or uh, a low logos, other kinds of graphic elements that you want to show. At the top of the screen here we have the two larger monitors. On the right hand or on the left hand side is the program monitor. And basically program is which of those video sources you're showing the audience now. So you can see that we have camera one on the small monitor and we're showing camera one on program currently. So the audience is seeing camera one at the moment. Preview is where you're queuing up the next thing that you want to show them after that. So the presumption here is that I'm going to switch to camera two 
right after I'm done showing them camera one. So that's one of the monitors right in front of the switcher here. On the far left hand side over there, you've actually got uh, another large monitor. And starting on the top here, you have four small screens across the top. These again can be configured to show whatever you'd like to see on them. I happen to have them set up to show program in one of the windows, preview in another window up here at the top, and then some of my other graphics sources like Graphics 1 and Graphics 2. There are also menus across the top of the screen that let you do things like uh, open up a project that you saved previously or import graphics or eject your graphics drives, those sorts of things. Uh, and then further down, you have a center section here, which is sort of a representation of all of the buttons on the switcher. Um, so you could actually switch your program just by using the mouse and clicking on the buttons that are, that are represented here. Uh, but more commonly, you'll be using the control surface. Uh, and then finally, below that, you have these two large windows down at the bottom, which are referred to as bins. On the left-hand side, uh, you can see up at the top, there are tabs here that let us switch between different bins. The DDR bins, as I mentioned a moment ago, are video clips. So each of these little thumbnail pictures that you see in the window here represents a, a piece of video that you've imported into your project that you may want to be able to play back during your show. There's a second uh, DDR over on the other side, but at the top of the bin, we also have a little tab here that says Graphics 1. And if I open up Graphics 1, those are graphic elements they might be a logo for your show, a title that you want to display, uh, or a photo or a map, some kind of still image like that. And then those bins uh, tabs are sort of mirrored over on the right hand side here. There's also the DDR2 on the right hand side with, with more video clips. There's a Graphics2 tab up at the top here which has more of those items stored in it. And then there's a third tab called Buffers which is a special kind of uh, storage which will also store animated vi video elements like a, a spinning logo or something like that that you may want to add to your program. Uh, and then looking more at the control surface here for a moment, the most obvious thing that you're, that you're working with here uh, on the switcher is this big colorful row of buttons here. Starting way over on the left hand side, you can see that we have these two long rows of identical rows of buttons. The upper one is labeled program and that corresponds to the program monitor that we looked at a moment ago. So I have uh, buttons here that match on each row, but the camera one naturally is on the first button on the row, camera two, camera three, camera four. But there's a whole lot of additional video sources available for you to look at um, when you're switching your program, including the DDRs, the graphics, and other various uh, other kinds of special effects that we'll be looking at here. And then the bottom row is preview. It's identical to the program row. Whatever you select on that row shows up on the program monitor, and that's where you'll be selecting uh, what the audience is going to see next. So that's just a quick tour. Uh, for all the different parts of the TriCaster system. Next, uh, in the next segment, we'll actually show you how to power this up, start your own session, your own project, uh, and then we'll get into the basic switching operations of the TriCaster.